Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Ross. And I'm Sam. Come closer to the mic. You're very <laughs> far away from the mic. This is going to be a bit of a different show. Uh, Chris is sick with the the sick. Um, I'm obviously Ross. And this is my wife, Sam. She has been mentioned on the show countless times. And this is her first actual appearance. It's pretty so. crazy it's taken this long to get the invite. But yeah. Better late than never. Better late than never. And there will be plenty of other times before never. Mm. Um, I think you did appear at one point on a show with Dan Grack. Or probably, uh, maybe pre-recording with Gracky. I definitely thought it was pre-recording. I don't know if that's totally accurate. But if I did interrupt it, it wasn't my intention. <laughs> that's okay. That was a really long time ago. I think we were talking about COVID vaccines. We were. He was talking about the rollout. Yeah. Ro- the rollout in Australia. And yeah. we were recording from our daughter's, play- what is now our daughter's playroom, which at the time was our my office. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So, I'll, I'll, I'll roll out with the normal Chris-isms. And uh, this is the podcast about everything and anything off-road. And... Uh, yeah, again, a, a slightly different show, and and thank you to everybody for joining us in 2024. We're recording this on December 28th of 2023, and it's been a crazy year, and uh, and we'll soon approach 200 episodes. Wow. This, yeah, so. Wow. That's 200, a lot. yeah, and then that means 250 is coming up soon, and that means, you know, we got to do something big for 250, which means Chris and I might actually I meet in say, person. I think it's time that yeah. Chris and uh, Ross are in the same place at the same which, time for reals. The question there is, do I and we go to Kansas City to visit Chris, or does Chris take his family and his wife, who's from the area that we mm. are living in, and come here? I would argue um, it would probably be easier for us to pack up our one small trials yeah, and yeah. bring her places uh, yeah um but we have had people say that for 200 and uh and absolutely for 250 we should uh we should do an event like find an off-road park rent out the camping space and you know kind of have our our Sounds celebration like it. It, it yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it sounds like a good plan. Maybe one that me and the little one stay home for, but that <laughs> sounds like a great plan. Sam's like, that, <laughs> like that's it. awesome. That is going to be the off the road again mecca with just you going. Yeah, I feel like until she's old enough to actually do the off roading, I think maybe we'll just hang here. And then once she's good to go, well, you guys can have a good time. She might be like two and a half for, fifth, for 250. So, all right. Well, I've got to ask years. my dad how old I was when he started taking me off road. I mean, probably too young, like an, an age that is no longer no. acceptable in terms of safety. Well, I mean, Though, I was in the have, back seat, have but... you yet shared with Chris that you put her on a quad? I have not told Chris that I, the quad was stationary. There is no. But nonetheless, she did she has... grab the handles and say vroom. Yeah. So I think yeah. she gets the concept. She gets the concept, yeah. but uh, she's still rear facing. So yeah, I think we have to at least be front facing. She's got to be front facing before be before she's like really into the you know truck off roading stuff. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a slightly different show from our normal uh, shenanigans, and instead of off road stuff, we are going to talk about. On road stuff because, or off road stuff. So, I now have many, many closer years mic, mic. of off road experience. True. Yeah. You, yeah. Um, lots of on road experience. A lot, lots of experience in cars made for off roading. Lots of experience in regularly changing vehicles when. Oh yeah, when but, the normal public would not subject but their certainly cars themselves. that are like equipped with all sorts of stuff to like be everywhere and anywhere. But I have a ton of experience in them. 
And because yeah. they show up and rotate so regularly, I think I'm pretty good at comparing them and noticing differences in them. I agree with that. But in all fairness, I will say that most of the press cars that come through this household are cars or crossovers yeah. or, yeah, you know, they're street vehicles. Very infrequently is it that that the vehicles here are dedicated, deliberate. All right. So I've put my butt in a lot of cars. Is what You've I, had is your what butt. I'm saying. Uh, you as a hot mom of a child and um also just before that too. also yeah no, no, no honestly before press cars came through this house i just was a you know masochist in buying and selling cars with um unfortunate frequency yeah but so but Ross you has had a, has owned a car more than a car for every year that we've been together. So I'm definitely yeah. well versed in the and constant rotation of cars. But anyway, back to my expertise yeah. here. Yeah. So um, Sam's my expertise. Be my best skill and the way that I judge all the cars is how easily I can fall asleep in them. And for context, I am an excellent sleeper. Yeah. And thankfully, our daughter has gotten my sleep jeans. This but isn't backseat driver. This is. Front passenger, I'm helping you look for things. Oh, by the way, I'm going to. Oh, sleep. I don't even ever pretend I'm looking well, for anything. I'm well, going to sleep. Not anymore. Yeah, no, maybe in the in the early days I pretended, but once upon so. a time in the early days when I had a Challenger and we would mob to places, I would say, "I need you to help me." The best thing you should look for is the inside of your eyelids. Yeah, no, I yeah. So um, we've been together for a few years. I have a very, um, I'm a great judge of how well you can fall asleep in a car. You have a proclivity so for falling asleep in vehicles. I have been saying vehicles. for years now that that's what the people want, is they want to know what car can their significant other fall asleep well in. So I'm here with that information. Yeah. That I'm sure everyone's yeah. been waiting for for the, um, episodes. The origin of this story is that... Um, once upon a time, I had an avalanche. We've talked about this mm. avalanche. Wait, let's let's get into, let's get into my yeah. List well, let's just you start talking about cars. You know, How do you know that's not on my list? Oh, I don't, I don't. But so, so, so I think. Let me just set the stage here. Um, I had an avalanche. Sam loved to sleep in it. Then I had subsequent cars, the Challenger. She loved to sleep in. And then I had a WRX. She did not love to sleep in it. And there were other forerunners and now the GX and plenty of other vehicles in, in between. Other forerunners, Miatas, and there were a lot of cars between now and then. Um, so we've been joking for a long time that it would be funny to discuss the nappability score. So on on this show, we are going to go into two things. We're going to go into... Vehicles with high nappability scores, which uh, if you've ever seen Succession, there are, you know, for people of a certain tax bracket, cars of a high nappability score. But we want to talk about the, the cars that are of high nappability for people that aren't in that tax bracket. Um, and then, you know, we, we have this small, small living and breathing being that runs around our house that we like to put in cars and take places. So we're, we're going to talk about a uh, car seat stuff. Um, but first the, the nap ability, because everybody knows that as a passenger or as a second row passenger, um, there is a huge variance in how comfortable a car can be. When it comes to falling asleep, whether it is a, you know, an exhausted parent or a hangover or just you're going to do an off-road adventure and riding shotgun in something and you find yourself nodding off because you've had a long day or a week or a month or a year. Um, so we wanted to talk about this because Sam is the pro of pros when it comes to this topic. So uh, we. We decided we would put together a list, a, a three-car list. So, so I have 
my top three. And then I have an honorable mention. Hmm. And I even have, if you want it, like <clears throat> one that was like such a disappointment, like really thought I was getting something good and was really okay. sad about it. Um, let's do the honorable mention. Honorable. Okay. So the honorable mention goes to the Avalanche. The Chevy Avalanche. The 2005 oh, Chevy Avalanche. So for context, Ross and I met in college in a really small town. Undergrad. In 2012. And we lived on streets that were parallel to each other, but we didn't know that. 6,000 person town in the the school that we went to. And so So, I walked past this giant avalanche. Like It wasn't giant. For a few months. And I grew up. Two inch leveling kit. It was normal height. I grew up on Staten Island where it was much more urban. A car like that just. I mean, years later, I saw that car parked on my parents' street. It didn't fit. Um, no, nope. but I would it always fit so walk poorly past that this somebody car. put a screwdriver through a tire. Yeah, <laughs> I had a Nissan Sentra for context. <laughs> um, and one of the first nights, yeah, two thousand, Ross walked me home uh, from one of the bars in our college town. He said, "I have to get something out of my car," and he beeped this huge fucking what did I get? truck. I don't know a jacket. Well, probably probably jacket, knowing you, yeah, probably, probably more contact solution. Mm-hmm. But I he beeped this car, and I was like, "This is your fucking car!" Yeah. And I got on the bed, and I was like, "Who needs a car this big? What do you do for a living? Are you a farmer?" And now says the stat town girl. Yeah, and now when I yeah. see what's in my driveway on a regular basis, it's yeah. Know. But no, yeah. so the avalanche. The I remember being in the avalanche. Years. And it was the first car I'd ever been in that I could sit in the front and I could sit cross-legged and there was enough room. Gosh. And that's what I'm sitting right now. And that's like my preferred way to sit. And I could sit that way and fall asleep like that. Yeah. It was like being on a recliner. Which it was like mind boggling to me that that could be your car. Says something about the exhaust I had on, on it at the well, time. Well, yeah, that was a whole other There was situation. a time when you would not. Yeah. Yeah. The, what, what's it called when a dude is allowed to sit? With their like legs spread. They're never allowed to sit that way. No, they just but, think they are. Okay. Man spread. What's man spread? Yes. That, the two thousands era of trucks is made for that. Yeah. And the Avalanche, two thousand five Avalanche that my Maybe father. Maybe that's owned. why somebody and, put a screwdriver through your tire because they were sick of that on their street. If just saying. Whole, then they should. I'm not saying it's right to ever put a screwdriver through somebody's tire. A conversation with but me. But it was pretty fucking loud. Yeah, but it was loud. But it, I also used it to the deepest degree of what I could use it for. What does that mean? Like it wasn't just like oh, I had a truck for a truck. Like okay, but you had a loud exhaust to have a loud exhaust. N- no, I had a loud exhaust at one point because the exhaust rusted and mm. fell off. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it literally. All right, so that's my honorable mention. Off. My um, top three are in no specific order. When we okay. talked about this all of an hour ago, these are the three cars that immediately came into my mind. That I was also like, that oh exhaust- wow, that car was so comfortable. The the laugh of this story to go back is that the exhaust fell off of that avalanche when we left the town of New Paltz the day after we grad. Not after we grad, like yeah, we graduated. You know why? Why? too old to have that shit on your car anymore no it was just it was like is this the look you want to have as a young adult uh, no it was just like uh as our daughter would say no no okay what are your top three (laughs) hit us okay um nap ability scores in no certain order denali the yukon denali yes okay that car was genuinely a car that I felt like even my feet on the floor, no matter pothole, bump, anything, it was so yep. smooth. It had huge mm. seats. It was like, we took that on a road trip. I, that was so comfortable. And we went to Ikea after we made the most of that car. But Ikea in Jersey. Yeah. But and that I, was really I will attest to that because that was the uh, the Yukon Denali with, I think it had Magna Ride and air suspension. More importantly, it had the three liter baby duramax diesel yeah which got 27 miles per gallon yeah. in a six thousand pound truck yeah um and 
the beauty of that diesel is that it shuts up. It is silent on the highway. Yeah, it was but such it a nice was... car to drive in. And that was a car that, like, after that, we were like, well, if we get pregnant with twins next time, I guess we would just have to buy yeah, one of those. If it, it was like, it's so it was like, nice. oh, if they're, are, if they're for some reason our triplets, like, we're, yeah, we're getting, I guess we'd have to get gonna one. just have to buy a Duramax. Yeah. We wouldn't buy it. Super we, comfortable, so quiet, yeah, we, so nice. We wouldn't buy a Denali, but we'd buy, like, that engine in a Z71 Tahoe. Yeah. That was great. That was, okay, that is. Yeah. Okay, what's one on your list? One on my list is the Suburban that we took to Hudson recently. Oh, yeah, that was really nice. Which was on the list. That was really nice. You know what? It wasn't on my list, but it was really nice. Same engine. I did sleep in it. Same engine, same frame, just Mm -hmm. a little bit shorter. Yeah. Actually, no, a little bit longer is that Suburban. So, yeah, but that's the same engine. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Do you want one up? Do you want to give us one of yours? That was those were two of my nap list. The suburban and the and the Yukon. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second, this is such an exciting off road vehicle, but for the nap ability, can't be beat. That Kia Carnival, man. That car. That was great. We <laughs> took that car on a road trip when our daughter was like barely three months. Oh. Obviously, super easy for the car seat. No, she was probably six months. We went so. Oh, you so were in Pater- Yes, okay. we took the Key yeah. Carnival, which is Kia's mini van, which sounds so lame Actual to minivan. say, but but it looks like an SUV. They styled it's so it like nice. the Telluride. It looks awesome. Yeah, if it had all wheel drive like Toyota has in the Sienna, mm-hmm. it would they would sell a metric fuck ton of them. Yeah. Um. So basically, for those of you who don't know the the main spoiler of that car is that in the um middle row not only is it captain shares it's reclining caption captain shares so literally there was a time that Hold our on. daughter was asleep in her car seat and i was next to her in the back fully reclined sleeping yeah so it's great the middle and upper tier trims of the carnival well, yes yeah, so i'm sure yeah. they emulated unsurprisingly first class airplane recliners so if you sit in the second row in the carnival, it does the full, like, like truly feet up, yeah. relaxing on a lazy boy. <laughs> like it was so enough nice. room that you can effectively. It's it's a basically a bed. Yeah, and, and you know, as a parent, especially for a really young kid, sometimes the only times you maybe have a minute to yourself is when you're in the car and they're asleep. So to actually be able to like put my feet up and yeah. legit go um, to sleep was so nice. Unfortunately for Sam, we drove the carnival home through such a bad snowstorm that it, that it dictated us leaving the place that we took it to. Yeah. And uh, it basically mobbed home across all, literally all of Connecticut. We were in yeah. Rhode Island. Um, but yeah, great, great second row. Yeah. Seats. So even despite that great, terrible great. car ride home, that yeah. still really sticks out to me as a really great car for napping. I maintain if they had all wheel drive in those things, they would sell so many of them. Yeah. Um, it would have been great on the way home too, if it had a little more. Traction. Well, you spent most of the ride home consoling our daughter, even though. There's nothing really to console her. No, she was just in the car seat she's through just, a nap and not a nap. She's and... just she was small baby. And, um, <laughs> great car to drive through a, an effective blizzard, though. Gotta yeah. say. Yeah. Like, it got us home. It was on all season tires. Um, I peed behind it in the Starbucks parking lot. That was so sketchy that I didn't even go in to get a coffee. <laughs> Uh yeah, that 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 was on my list also for the car seat discussion. Yeah, too. that was really good for the car seat. Yeah. So okay, so my that, that's the go ahead. my next snapping car, the one that to me is not like we have triplets. This it's just the, like this is the last one. We're this real is, rich. This is and you say which car do you want to buy? Granted, I don't know the full name of this car, so you're gonna have to tell me. But it was the Mercedes. My best Valtteri Botas voice Mercedes. with the massaging seats. Ooh, the GLS 
63 w4 yeah the huge one with the the monoblock wheels yeah. i apologize for anybody that's not watching or that is watching and not listening yeah it was so the, good um, and also unfair advantage for this car we had this car when i was like 37 weeks pregnant and the massaging seats were just we're talking about different cars <gasps> oh no well, we've had two with massaging seats. That's we, a problem. Uh, tell more stories. Okay. I'm, I'm going to Google Sheets. So, it was basically just a super Oh, no. Nice. I know which one. Yeah. No, we did have a Mercedes. Okay, I thought it wasn't a Mercedes. Yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't a Mercedes. Um, we had a Mercedes, and I think we've talked about this on the show, but there was a Mercedes here that we took to the doctor appointment when the doctor was like, you need to go get admitted right now because your baby is coming is it the same was one it that car okay also ross had a different press car every week of my third trimester and fourth trimester for those familiar with that term that like it was very confusing there was a lot of things happening but regardless i'd say any of the mercedes with the massaging seats are pretty hard to beat. the gle 53 coupe we had that's the one that we took that we were like oh yeah this is a great car yeah by the way y'all need to get the doctor yeah to the hospital. yeah maybe that's why it has a special place in my heart yeah because too. the next car that i have on my press car list is the uh okay we're gonna probably wrap this up soon but the next one is have is the m5 that i took to my cousin's wedding yeah um so that car seats so let's talk car seats quick because we are uh what, how many minutes have we done how do we, how do i tell chris 17. how do i tell 17 so, can i give you my disappointment though disappointment in in the car that i was like oh my god yeah. Napability? Napability, yeah. but kind of everything okay good so for anyone else is. listening who like is our age maybe if you're oh. also a female or not but Especially if you loved like that early 2000s reality TV, like I do and did. She's saying if you, you grew saw up that car, if you grew up with like the Paris Hilton, Paris Hilton, I'm talking about Lauren Conrad. That's my girl. Paris, Paris, we're a little young for. Oh my god. Um, how could I possibly? We had a G wagon. And I was so hyped and felt like such a badass bitch. And we took our like three week old oh, yeah. to the pediatrician in it. And it was so cool looking and everything else about it sucked. It was. There were. It was so underwhelming and just like not. That was like sitting in the back seat for that all the time we had that car because yeah. Daisy was so little. She, our baby it was, was very so small. uncomfortable. It, um... it did look really cool, but it was really uncomfortable. The caveat is that we had a Duna, so anybody that's listening that has car seat or stroller knowledge knows that a Duna is a car seat and a stroller in two, in one, in two. It's, in one. it's two in so one. So typically you have to yeah. like take the carrier off and you have a stroller under yeah. it and it's put in the back. This is one that the wheels just collapse in, so the wheels are attached, which is so nice because you have your stroller everywhere. It's amazing. It's but the only one that when does When you go that. to put it into a car, because it has wheels... It's, it's enormous. much bigger. Yeah, it, it, so it's figure, the wheels are touching the passenger seat effectively. Yeah, figure if it's, it's not a big enough car. Eight inches longer, yeah, maybe six inches longer than most normal cars. Yeah, seats. we love the Duna. Would Duna? recommend it to everyone. We'll 100% do it again. recommend But like it made, I have a CX-5 is my my regular person car. Because I don't get press cars Second every week. CX-5. Yeah, and second CX-5. Love it. Maintain However, through all of the press cars we've had, all of the cars that I've had because I'm a psychopath, the CX-5 is still fucking awesome. Yeah. It is. Which is why we still have it. But I still genuinely enjoy we driving those cars. The Duna in it, we were yeah. shocked by how tight it is to get the Duna in. Which is the remarkable CX-5. because most car seat reviewers say the CX-5 has plentiful room. Yeah. So this is a we're talking about the factor of the Duna itself in saying the G wagon G sixty was G sixty three G five. That's, that's a Chris question. I don't know. No, it's a. I should just fucking Google Sheets it because I have this on Google Sheets. It is called the 
Mercedes G63 AMG. That's it. Okay, I thought then. there were more things to it than that. Um, but yeah, it was great to drive, great to be in, great to close the door. Closing the doors is yeah euphoric. Yeah. Um, but if you have a larger than average car seat, you will have a bad time. But also, if you actually want a comfortable car and you're spending that much money, I can say now from personal experience, there are way better ways to spend your money. The car looks amazing. And if you want to feel like the <clears> Christian <throat> Cavallari of it all, that's your car. But if not, it's just not very comfortable. You mean there are better ways to spend $172,000? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could probably think of it. For 172 grand, I would be get oh god this is jesus i don't even a Porsche. for a daily for if one car to, to rule them all, all? no yeah. one yeah. car to rule them all yeah uh kind turbo s for 172 yeah but nobody is nobody plays that game and if you want a gui you just buy a gui yeah game. They're be- uh, they are beautiful but i was just so excited about it and i was like i'm so uncomfortable back here yeah yeah and even at that point i could have napped anywhere from just lack of sleep and it was not very easy to nap in it also uh cost effectively 40 percent of our house yeah it's a little ridiculous so <laughs> yeah well we can't afford one yeah. anyway so i guess yeah that's no, really a no, no we can it just is a 2002 and it needs four thousand. Well, then I could really live out my reality show dreams. Of, uh, of, I'd have uh, the same deferred, model. Deferred maintenance. Um, yeah. So what else? Uh, what vehicles have come through this house that have surprised you? Surprised for the better, or for the worse. Both. Um, I'm always surprised by how much WRXs suck. Um. I, I will say, I will For preface that. this by saying I had a 20, I, I had the first 2017 that was delivered in the state of Connecticut, which was the, uh, the first VA model year after they, you know, the, it was the second model year of the VA. So they had time to unfuck things and, 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 um. There's a chance that the seats and ride quality might have contributed somewhat significantly to my needing back surgery. So, yeah, of all of the cars that Ross had through my third trimester, the WRX that you had VB was the, VB the only one that we got like two blocks from our house. Mm. And I was like, I can't do the whole ride in this yeah, car. We, we, and I was just too uncomfortable. Granted, one of the weeks, literally, I think the last press car you you had before the one that was, we ended up with the hospital was a Miata. And I was perfectly fine in it. It was either a Miata or a C8. Like I was, was one I was completely fine. Got in and out. No issues. Hold on. And I, I this have WRX, I was like, we have to go home. I can't be in the car for this long. The, other than that, I'd say the... The second to last car that we had before you went to the hospital to birth our child was... A car that you were in more times than the number of times you were in the WRX. And that car was the Mazda Miata. Ross's favorite. Favorite. It is. It's, you don't. That was a great car. Don't talk. No, like, the Miata you know. was so fun. And that was the car we had during COVID that we would just take on like little getaways for sanity. And it was just the two of us. But, no, I love the Miata. It was great. Yeah, no, the different Miatas. No, we know, but I'm saying the Miata in general no, holds a special place in, in your heart. I, I think if there was a car that I was going to buy, if I was ever to put my foot down and, and be that guy and just be like, I'm ordering a car, it's going to be the car that I have forever. It, if I could tell you how many times Ross has told me, I'm going to have this car forever. No, but if I was going to, if I was going to be like, this is my... F- I'm turning 40. I'm going to order a new car and then buy that car and have it forever. Mm-hmm. If, if I told you it was a Miata, mm-hmm. 
you there's you wouldn't be surprised no like there's no <laughs> like the it, it's just it's just happy mm-hmm. and it's, i would say like where are kids gonna go but we'll deal with that when you turn 40 i guess you turn 40 uh, how old will she be Oh no, we just talked about this. Yeah, yeah. she's still going to be in a booster. Shit. Got a while. <laughs> we did just talk Shit. about this. Um, um, I'm, I have been very uh, continually impressed by how nice the Kias are. The Kias do tend to... The Telluride, the Carnival we talked about, the Stinger, yeah. all of them that we've Stinger had. That I very good. Yeah, that I'm usually like, oh, Kia, they're actually super nice. You were skeptical with the EV6, though. The electric... The oh, I don't love electric that. electric one. Do you not? The electric ones, I just feel like I'm in a spaceship and it's like an uncomfortable spaceship. Is that the styling and the design? The styling inside or... is so minimalistic that I feel like I'm on a folding chair. Like, it's very strange. I don't really care for it. It's. I feel like I'm on a folding chair. This is the first okay. time in my whole life I think anyone's ever told me to talk louder. I work with people with hearing impairment for a living. Like, no one has ever told It's probably me. the first thing I've ever told you to talk louder. Exactly. Um, um, but yeah. So the Kias are always nice. It's interesting that you thought that of the EV6 because we test drove the Mach-E probably six months prior. And I really liked that. And you really liked it. Yeah. And that has less buttons. It's it has not the fewer, buttons. Not I think it's, it's a few I buttons. think it's the seats. And oh, like, okay. Yeah. The seats and like the center console. You and... can't. Those are not tuned. We had the EV6 GT. It has manual seats because it is the fast no, one. No, but I'm saying not like that it didn't have buttons to adjust, just like the actual seat in terms of like its ergonomics. The fast one has sports okay, seats. Okay, well, then I don't like the sports seats. You don't. We, we would oh, never. Oh, you know what? Other one was really. I feel like I'm just like ragging on cars here. Fucking get after that. It. Really, really tacky Corvette we had. The first, oh, the first C8? Here. The uh, way that yeah. the um, yeah, yeah, racing yeah. seats are. Like, I'm yeah. not a big person. No, it, it, I had to sit like it had the comp seats forward. Yeah, but I was like, I don't really understand how this is comfortable yeah. for an extended I period. I consider myself uh, a moderate, medium-sized human, especially as far as Corvette owners go. I'm yeah. I'm tiny. Yeah. Um, and we've talked about this, and Chris and I have talked about this, and like other people on the show have talked about this, but that Corvette, the first C8 Corvette that I had a press car, was specced to the nth degree of, so like, tacky. wannabe old man Oh my car god, spec. we literally, we lived in a condo at that point where we had, like, communal parking, and I remember yeah. Ross, like, tried to always get the same spot for his press cars, and I remember coming home from work. My own cars. And <laughs> seeing this car Until and being like, yeah, it was silver. And then I, like Ross was like, "Let me show it to you." And came out, and I was like, "I don't even want anyone to see me getting into it." It was this silver with so flashy red and black yeah. stripe down the middle, and basically a tram stamp. Yeah, it was but it was unbelievable, like insanely fast. Go like going like I had I owned a C six Corvette, yeah. and going from given at the time that the C eight <laughs> showed up, I I did own. And then see Miata, um, which is still my favorite of all the cars that I've owned. I know. And, um, but God, that Corvette was ugly and yeah. God, was it fast. Well, I'm going to take a minute to actually say the, a car that I do really love that I was surprised by is your GX. I Alexis? really like it. Yeah. yeah. And I actually really like driving it. Yeah. Which is not something I often say, but I actually really like when I take that car. If it's like bed weather or something, and truck. I take that car, it's body on frame. It is a truck. Truck. We'll call it a truck. And I really yeah. like it. Um, and I love the looks people give me when I get out of it. I love driving that to work and parking, and like someone seeing me like hop out yeah. of that, and they're like, "What the?" And that's an added bonus. But I do really like it, and I find it really comfortable. Back seat's not super comfortable, I have to say. The back seat, but as we have found, is. An enormous differentiator between the body on frame trucks and crossovers yeah. that we have spent time with. For sure. Like the Telluride with a car seed, yeah. easy as hell. Well, even, I don't know if a Forerunner, which one of those that is. But a Forerunner is way more comfortable. Forerunner is the same truck as the GX. Then they why is it the so same much more frame. comfortable? 
Maybe because the yours is a bench in the back and the forerunner was captain seat. Which forerunner? Well, that's the problem. Which forerunner? Which I forerunner? They I've all owned, just blend together. I've owned three of them. And I liked Chris's forerunner. That was a 2005. Oh. Yeah. But, you know what, though? Maybe the honest truth, though, is that before we had a kid, I never really sat in the back seat. I and I remember sitting in the back seat in the GX in super early days and being like postpartum and being like, this is uncomfortable. Yep. So maybe it's just that. But I do really like that car. Yeah, that truck. Excuse me. Excuse you. It's a good truck. Yeah. Yeah. If we say goodbye to it, then. I think that's one that will always. I don't know. I think she's an icon. It'd be hard to get rid of her. People in our neighborhood know her. Oh my god! People in our neighborhood actually like know who we are because of they know. They're like, (laughs) I took our daughter to this like Thanksgiving morning community thing, and people like, oh, where do you live? You know, and like I'm explaining it, and they're like, oh, are you the one with the black truck? Oh, do you sell cars? Do you like everyone knows our house is like either Mm -hmm. because of the truck or because of the containers? Yeah, Alexis is a good truck. This is the fourth truck on the same frame that we've owned. Yeah, I think you maybe have a type. Three Forerunners, GX, two Miatas. I mean, I think that's your type. Forerunners and Miatas. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And type. I, th- I think that's probably a good place for us to <laughs> all this. Um, I will defend those to the end of life, though. The, I would never question it. The Forerunner is comfortable, capable, endlessly reliable, um, possibly a little bit soulless because it is all of those, but also that makes it soulful because you can do everything with it and it won't care, it won't die. Like you'll take all these adventures and, and that's it. And you can say the same thing about the Meows. Yeah. And I have. More memories driving the white Miata with the roof down in like 20 degree weather mm-hmm. with the heat blasting than most people have with all of the cars they've ever owned. Um, yeah, I know it's so silly like talking about this stuff because most people would, most people don't have car memories, you know. Yeah, but I think probably I would guess but, other, other people who tune into you and Chris probably right, feel right. similarly. But, but that said, one of the greatest, most exciting and coolest things I've ever seen in my life was driving home from Jersey City on the 4th mm-hmm. of July. The roof down in the Miata, we went up through New York City and then up along 95 through like Stanford yeah. and the entire drive from Jersey city through New York city with the roof down the whole way. Yeah. We watched fireworks, city fireworks, personal. And something fireworks. that was particularly unique. I think about that is that was July 4th, 2020. So that there too. was no traffic because you weren't allowed to watch yeah, we, the fire. We were the you only to gather. car on the road. Right. There, people weren't going to things. Yeah. So we it was sort of just like an open road, which yep. is a rarity alone in New York City. Amazing. Yeah. That was really yeah. cool. I'll always remember that. I will never. That is as far as my. Yeah. Taking the Miata place has made getting there the adventure. Right. And especially, again, during a time that like our adventures were, you know, we'd go. To yep. See your parents and stay outside in the driveway, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely made things more of an adventure. We hand beers off by getting within ten feet and then throwing them to each other. Yeah, but but the fact that the cars that we choose make those experiences possible is why we choose those cars. Yeah, because it's not a jeep, and you don't have to spend time unfucking it. Mm. So, anyways. Um, thank you for joining and listening to a very different version of the Off the Road Again podcast. Thank you so much for having thank me. You, it's wild to be on this side of the yeah. wall while you were... The fourth wall. I've broken the fourth wall. You've I'm finally the fourth- there. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Wow. Um, 
And yeah, thank you to everyone for joining us in the start of 2024. This is, uh, we are recording in the future. In the future. In the future. So yeah. And, uh, and thank you to Chris and mostly Chris for making this happen. Yeah. So. Hope Chris is feeling better by the time he listens. I hope Chris is feeling better. And I hope that Chris and the Tracy's drag Sarah back to her home and we can actually spend time with them here. Yeah. Or we'll get out there. But we all we'll definitely need to, yeah. to hang out yeah, for we, sure. We do. So, all right. Thank all you. Right. I don't know.